Welcome to episode number 13. 13. That's number 1313. Push them together. Episode 13 of the Bodie Bros. I am John with a J, and to my left or right, depending on how you're looking at the screen, is. It's Bodie Ray. And today we got Osho making oh. love a sacred experience. It's so perfect for Ray to introduce that because as I welcomed him to my Zoom screen prior to the podcast where we do our weekly recap together, not talk about the show, but talk about each other's lives, <laughs> but his, his, the bottom of his screen says Bodhi Tantra. Every week it's something different. So he surprises me with a new Bodhi name. And this week he was shirtless. So for those of you listening and not watching right now. Or maybe imagine, even more. Um, oh, imagine a shirtless, guns ablazing Bodhi Ray with a baseball cap on backwards. And then to the extreme opposite side of the rainbow, a John with a J with uh, dressed fully up with um, rainbow scarf, Bodhi beads, and a football cap on backwards. Um, yeah, that's that's what that's what we're looking at if you're not looking at it. So welcome to the episode. Thank you for joining us. 13 countries now around the world, Ray, um, elevated from 12 of last week. We are globally spreading. Maybe, our- hopefully, maybe every episode next week will be 14 with 14. episode 14. That is the goal. We are that four subscribers away from being able to claim our unique URL on YouTube. So four more of you out there don't mind hitting that subscribe button on YouTube. That would be fantastic. So we could be youtube.com backslash the Bodie bros versus youtube.com backslash XYZ 984 Alabama, Omaha, hot route, whatever. So yeah, here we go. Let's uh, jump into a cold pool of this awaiting (laughs) video. Well, I would say it's probably one of the first sex videos I think I've ever watched where I almost fell asleep. <laughs> oh, it's a good, it's a good, is this a sex? someone talking about sex. The sex I was going to say, is this a sex video? <laughs> I was very concerned at the, the, the onset of this video because I don't mind a slow talker, but he, he was frighteningly slow when... He said, and I'm like, oh, God, no, 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 no. It can't be late. He warmed up. He definitely warmed up, and the speed picked up a little bit. Again, I don't mind the slow talking. And, in fact, it was a really nice reminder that I'm permitted to do the same if I'd like, to take my time to collect my thoughts. Um, right. And we are always in a rush, and maybe that was his point, because he did start the video off by talking about how when it comes to making love, we are always in a hurry. I would agree. I wouldn't say everyone is always in a hurry, but um, that is a a common theme that comes up and and maybe something that we should um, be mindful of, that it's not a a race, um, nor is it a marathon. It's um, it's a sacred experience, as the the title yeah. of the video says. And one of the things he says is to make a separate room in the house, just for making love, and that you should go in, you know, take a bath, and enter this room like you're entering a temple, and have that room, that sacred space, just for love. Now, is that practical for everyone? Probably not. No, but, but- you jumped into my favorite part of the video already i'm over there tiptoeing into the the kiddie pool area over here and you're cannonballing into the middle of the the deep end thanks ray this is like the <laughs> best part of the video go ahead take it away go i mean that's all i say was that he was saying had a special room just for love and nothing else but love and going in there and making it sacred and i mean making a sacred space is a very good idea could you make one special room for a house or an apartment into that? I don't know. I mean, if you could, it'd be great. So I, I, I want to do it. It's a, good, it's a good idea. I want to, I'm aspiring to do that in, in any of my future homes or anywhere. I, I really, I love this idea. I love it because for so many reasons, but 
I, I like, I, I don't like the routine of, of love making. I don't like, all right, well, you know, we, we, we're going to go to bed and you could argue that, well, if you make a room for it, then that's routine. Cause you're like entering the room, but it's, it's not routine. You're, you're creating a, a sacred practice and you're removing yourself from the routine of life and the root and the, the normalcy of, of the rooms in that house. And, and most of the time, most people, what do they do? they're doing it in the bedroom and they'll go in there and they do the thing and then they'll fall asleep. I think by having a separate room, that's really powerful because it doesn't, just allow you you can fall asleep in there but eventually you have to get up and then you know go to the bedroom and do your other things i think it's exciting that you know you're entering into this other realm this dimension right. and, and like this like when you open that door and you said you know have the incense have the candles you're putting so much intention into this coming together of two people versus it just happening or you trying to make it happen in the bed or on the couch while you're watching tv you got, it's an agreement that you're coming together to, to grow slowly and, and taking as much time as possible um, building toward all the things that he talks about in this video, the peaks and the valleys, and, and then not abandoning that. That's why I also like the idea of this room is that when it's over, you know, you're listening to some music, you're spending some time in what he calls the valley orgasm. And that's the coming down together and not leaving um, your, your partner right after the, you know, orgasmic release, right. but actually not just, st staying. Not just, running, not just running right to the bathroom and then just like, okay, go back and watch TV or grab a Hot Pocket or something. <laughs> right. I love the, love the extremes of your But um, your yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great <laughs> idea because, you know, you enter in there and it's, you're walking in there with the intention of love. So it's a dedication. It's a sign of commitment. I, I think it's a beautiful idea if, if you could do it. Yeah. If it's, pra yeah. Like if I it's said, it's not always practical. If you're living in a studio apartment or one bedroom apartment, you only have so much room for your stuff and things. So how, how, I guess, I guess the, the way to combat that is, is you, you know, you take that bedroom or you set that scene in the living room for, you know, your partner or for each other. And, and you just, you, you create it that way. It takes a little more effort because you don't already have the setup, but I think that in and of itself is beautiful because you're, you're showing that you're putting in the effort to come together in, in a very romantic way. Yeah, you could always have a room divider, you know, kind of like what you use for your little set there. Maybe section up, you know, section a room off or part of a room. The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think there's some creative ways to to be able to implement this idea. But I love it. Thank you for jumping right into it. Um, that was that's the... Uh, one thing that I was super excited to talk about because there's not much that I'm going to be able to personally um, explore from this video, but Ray has uh, assured me that he has some things that we could talk about. So that's super awesome. Student taking the back seat to the teacher driving the bus because he takes everyone to school when it comes to <laughs> making love. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Take us to school, Ray. What, um, what do you want to talk about? Well, I think when it comes to Tantra and using this, looking at sex as a way to, to come to higher planes of consciousness is to look at it in its relation to the chakra system. Now you have uh, the first chakra, which is basically survival, primal. Sex on that level would be sex for procreation and you, know, you can see that as early civilization continuing the bloodlines um, even when it came to you know, farms and land and arranged marriages to continue that, that you know the continuation of the assets of wealth keeping in the family um, you could even maybe even say prostitution could be a first chakra um, aspect of sex because it's primal it's more about keeping your yourself uh, afloat financially 
Mm. Um, so when sex moves up to the second chakra, the second chakra deals with sensuality, pleasure. And this is the area where most people, when they think of sex, come in is the second chakra. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that, that chakra, that energy center has to be open for a continued sexual relationship. That's a, you know, that's a big part of it. As we move up, we get to the third chakra, which deals with personal power. So power, obviously there's a lot of power in sex relationships. You have people who maybe when you're younger, you know, you, you want to sleep with as many people as possible. And you want to feel that, you know, you want to be that stud or the woman who wants to sleep with the hottest guy or the most successful person. Um, or maybe to try to prove a sense of uh, self-worth. So that's kind of comes into uh, third chakra sex to look at, look at sex that way. For most people, for a lot of people, sex is one or maybe a combination of those three chakras at least. And then what we do is we move up to the heart. Then sex becomes making love. The heart becomes open and sex becomes an expression of love, expressing my love, my feelings for you. That doesn't mean those other chakras don't also play a part in that. Obviously, you have the lust and you could have pleasure going along with the love. And those two can be open synonymously. It's, it's, it's good. So, um, but sometimes not always getting to that place of where you're making love, from sex to making love. Sometimes that's a big leap for people. Um, now, when you get to other places of Tantra, that's kind of using sex to move up to the higher states of um, conscious, up to the throat. So, go moving upward, if you were going to go into a sexual relationship with an open th throat chakra, that'd be able to express how you feel during lovemaking, being, feeling safe with the other person to express what you like, what you don't like. Um, divine speech. Moving upward, that's when it gets into the really higher realms of um, Tantra. I've never got up to that point before, personally. Um, I've done some, I've done some Tantra stuff here and there with one person I dated before. We would do eye gazing. Um, we would do kind of a rocking back and forth, kind of move the energy upward. Uh, we would do the yab yum position, which is very popular in tantra. Which is the yab yum is where you're you're seated, almost almost Indian style. The guy is, and the woman sits on top of you with her legs coming out behind you, and you're both seated upward. And it, it doesn't even have to be a, a very a sexual position. You could just get in that position together and hold hands and rock back and forth and say affirmations to reach towards each other. And this is just to raise the energy up. So you start at the lower chakra. You start you get in that position. You know, you, you start off at your second chakra. You're feeling the sexual tension, the you know, the pleasure, and it's meant to move that energy up up to the heart, up to other planes, the third eye, you know, when you kind of merge and it just becomes one divine energy into union, the Shiva, the Shiva and the Shakti, the Shiva being the male energy, the Shakti being the feminine energy and that combines and kind of like a, a yin yang in sorts. So it's coming into oneness. Mm. So um, that's really what I know about it on a personal level and just from my knowledge of the chakras and energy. So what, what is it when, uh, what is the aspiration when you're talking about like the crown or the third, like what, what, what do you I would say to... that I would say that's just a merging of um, divine, divine masculinity and divine femininity merging into one and coming into a higher state of consciousness where you're, you start off as two individuals and the energy merges into oneness. I've never, so never that, achieved that. Is that I, is, I, think that. I think that takes a lot of practice to get to that point. So I'm not familiar with, you know, uh, tantric practices. 
um, I've never had uh, like a partner to where we, we looked at each other and go, let's get a book on Tantra or let's watch a video. And say, it's just, you know, just one of those things that just never happened. Not that we weren't open to it. It just never right. it, navigated down that Avenue. So what is that the ultimate goal of, of Tantra uh, union is to create, is, is to get to that oneness or. Yeah, it can be some, for some people it's, it depends how serious you take it. For some right. people, it's just creating a better connection right. for somebody, you know, doing sometimes I, so I think that practical, even if you're not, even if you don't want that, you could still take some of those contract practices and, and implement them into your lovemaking and do the eye gazing together. Just a, a higher level of connection. And just, and just get, and just get that connection before you, it's sort of almost like a, like an energetic force. Yeah. So it's not, not necessarily aspiring to achieving an ultimate goal of sexual enlightenment, but more so just gradually coming together and being more intimate, more connected with your partner and, right. and with those energy but centers think, in your I body, think, et cetera, et cetera. I think yeah. maybe if you start with that and then you're both on a spiritual path, I, maybe you can you know, get to that point. Right. I think it takes a lot of dedication and commitment from both. <laughs> Look at each other. Are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I like that. Uh, for some people, it's making a baby. For other people, it's uh, an integration of divine masculine and feminine. And maybe right. for some people, it's both or something entirely different. It's all, it, it, to me, it's all beautiful. It's all good. Like he said, it, it should. Um, we, we, we need to unlearn our programs of um, s our sexuality and lovemaking being sin and rid ourselves of the guilt uh, of what, you know, this beautiful act is, this empowering right. act. And um, I did disagree with a few things, and maybe you could bring light to why I disagree or agree with me in my disagreement. Uh, is this about the missionary position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, man, well... <laughs> That was one of them. He went on a stream a streak of me going, no, 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 wait, no, uh, wait, are you, why, why am I not connecting with this guy all of a sudden? So he first says that men's entire like erotic zone is limited oh, to yeah. his genitalia. Do you, do you no. agree? Okay. You don't, no. I don't agree with that either. If someone gets going on my ear, man, or like maybe even a part of my body, like I'm not familiar with the back of my knee or something like that. I don't know. I, that's an erogenous zone for me or for some people. So yeah, I, definitely. I'm not definitely. just stimulated by my zone down there. And, and I am more than just land. a penis. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, yeah. He I, says I, that the, he, he says that the whole, uh, the woman's whole body is erotic, but yeah, but the men's is only just limited right. to the genitalia, which Okay, so, okay, okay, we're same page there. Secondly, let the woman always be on top. Now, the woman on top is fantastic. The woman on top is, is, is great. And I agree, there's a lot of power there for the woman. But he said that scientifically it is right so the woman can be more active. Okay, makes sense. She's on top, she can be in more control right. and more active. And... But here's the thing. He says that if, if the man is more active, he comes to his ejaculation way too soon. I don't agree with that at all. Not exactly, because I'll tell you what. If someone, if my beautiful partner is on top of me, I'm trying to keep this as clean as possible and respectful as possible, I'm going to have a hard time sometimes controlling my flow, man. And I'm be like, okay, because right. she's in control of that, right? And she can forcefully get and, and put, and I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, boom, right? Yeah, sometimes you sometimes you, you go you faster with someone with a girl on top. Thank I don't really you. see the... <laughs> so I'm like, am I, I miss, but instantly I start questioning myself. I'm like, I'm missing something here, though. Maybe I shouldn't be, maybe if I'm achieving what he's ultimately talking about in this video, about maybe the, the two people becoming four people, remember that part he talks about? Yeah, so it becomes the, an orgy. The, <laughs> I know, I'm gonna have trouble holding myself even more. <laughs> Just kidding. So 
the two people becoming the four people. So he talks about the two of you each having a witness, watching what's happening and, and observe. So mindfully becoming more self-aware, more self-alert and more, you know, just present with everything that's happening, not just with you, but with your partner. Making and, it like a meditation. Right. Thank you. And so I'm like, all right, all right. So let me, let me talk to Ray about it. Let me consult with Ray and see what he says, because I, I don't know if, if is that what I was missing? That maybe I could challenge myself to to do these things and I might find that I have more control or more, I don't know, man. And then I'm like, nope, I disagree with what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't really agree with that. I know, like the like I said before about the yeah, beyond position, that's with the, the female on top. Um, yeah, that's, that's, and you kind of more rock back and forth rather than up and down. But ah, I guess to each their own, you know. I, yeah. it's to me, it's it's got you got to mix it up. It can't just be that. And I, I disagree that you're you're less likely to finish to last longer with the girl on top. I don't I don't think so. I I, I mean it all depends. You know, there's so many variables. Right. But, I also don't like absolutes too. Like the woman must always be on top. Like all right. Look, no offense, Osho, but he's an old man. Maybe he likes yeah. to be on the bottom because he's like, you know, what is he in this video? Like 90 or something? I don't know. I don't know, but maybe maybe he's just talking about what he likes. and Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's funny though. Do you ever, did you read the, some of the comments on that video? I did not. Oh, it was hilarious. Have you uh -huh. noticed after watching the video? <laughs> I think the guy blinks maybe one time. <laughs> <laughs> really, I didn't notice that. I gotta yeah. go back and. Read and then it. I started watching it again after, a, you know, after a second or third time, and I'm I'm just focused on his eyes to see if he blinks, <laughs> and then I'm not blinking because I don't want to like, I'm afraid I'm gonna blink when he blinks. Uh, I'm gonna miss the blink, so I'm sitting there with my eyes wide open. He's talking, all crazy quiet, with like, with his eyes wide open like an owl, and I'm just like, <laughs> that is hilarious because. I've never um, seen an Osho video before. Have you? No, I think I maybe seen one, but he he died in 1990. Oh wow! See, yeah, be notes to me. To go, he used to go by the name Rajneesh, and then he, I think he changed the name Osho either right before he died or right after he died. He very controversial guy. I was just about to ask you. You said that um, in in our. Um, preview on our facebook page the controversial osho and i was like he used, I need drive, to... he used to drive i don't know everything about him i like a lot of his teachings i read a lot i read stuff of some of his teachings and yeah um his books and his quotes are really good stuff but um he was controversial because he would drive uh, rolls royces he would wear rolexes but i think that was sort of more about the kind of show to kind of break the paradigm or break the perception of what a spiritual teacher should be. Right. I think that's more, I think that's more of what he was trying to show that you could be a spiritual teacher and still be okay in the material world and yeah, enjoy, I don't, enjoy I don't, form. I don't fault him for sporting the, the Rolex whoever, or driving the Benz. I mean, look at Tupac, man. Like everyone teaches and, and, and buys their things and shows off their blings and whatever, man. So long as you do But it. he also started some kind of, um, intentional community or and then i know the cia the cia got involved and he got arrested for some sort of immigration stuff but from also what i've heard too that really wasn't all him it was the other people that were in charge in the community that did a lot of the shady stuff and mm. i think he had to leave the u.s and it, everything just kind of kind of crumpled i think so so I think I know there's a lot of people who think he's a bad person, but so he was he was controversial during his time. But I liked a lot of his teachings, and I've said before in other episodes, I I kind of like some of those controversial teachers, you know. Yeah, people me like too. him, people like Chogram Trumpa Ripache, uh, Teal Swan. So there's a lot of just because someone maybe isn't always perfect in every aspect doesn't mean that they're they're wrong about a lot of their teachings. I've never, I've seen some quotes over the years for sure. I'm sure I've shared them at one point or another here and there. Um, 
never read any of his books though, never seen him on a video. So again, you brought me something entirely for the most part new. And um, I, I'm def I, I am definitely going to employ um, some of the slow down uh, tactics, if you will, for lack of a better word, um, because I, I definitely see that uh, as I enter almost the fifth year of my partnership with my current partner, um, how she, she appreciates that and how he taught, I mean, he, he makes um, a very adamant point to say foreplay, what do you say, like foreplay is the most important thing. Is, oh, foreplay is immensely important not the most important thing is immensely important and and i i would agree and, and when um when we take our time i think we see more you know amplified results more heightened connectivity and appreciation going coursing right. back and forth and he did excite me because he did talk about a word I've been trying to work in to one of these episodes and it just has never dropped. And I'm like, I'm finally going to get to use the word. Um, well, here we are in episode 13. It took 13 weeks to drop the word uh, milieu. So <laughs> it's just such a fancy word. And so he says to try to create the same um, milieu. Um, when he was talking about the after play. So, yeah. um, and uh, milieu is uh, like a social environment or whatever. And I think that's kind of, that, that's the biggest takeaway or one of the most exciting extractions that, that I'll pull from this. And, and that's the, like creating that room or that space, or even if it's not like you're not able to create that room or that particular space in your home for that, um, sacred coming together, but the, but actually start creating more sacredness in your coming together. Right. Um, that you'll be able to, but let's, let's use it as it pertains to the room. You could walk back into that room or the bedroom. I was going to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Dude, that excites me. And then start having all those feelings come back because the, the med it's become a meditation and the meditation of, of love making. Love making has become that. Um, the meditation has become love making. Love making has become the meditation. You've joined those forces, and so you can yeah. walk in without your partner, even by yourself. You could just walk in your room and ejaculate. By yourself. I think that's what he was saying, right? In I think that's what he was saying. In, right? in, 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 in a nutshell. Can you imagine just having a room in your house that you could just walk into and just uh, <laughs> bam? <laughs> it makes me think of that uh, that um, video by the Lonely Island. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'll, I'll drop the link below, folks. <laughs> um, but right, I think that okay. So I'm not alone in the fact that that's what he was alluding to in a very calm and debonair way. He's like so. Um, basically, you can you could even you know do some of the same activities without her. Be light the candles again. Press play on the music and <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I was like, I like that. I was like, wow, that's yeah, that's could, very you still, powerful. You could still ex you could still experience the the peaks and the valleys on your own and. Maybe it's just because if you've dedicated that room for so long for that one experience of love, you walk in there, it's like going to, um, you know, I guess it would be like an athlete stepping on the field. You know, you step That's on the field, you kind of get, you kind of get in that zone. So when you're, you're, you dedicate that one room to just making love and that's it, you walk in there, even by yourself, you're probably just going to be right in, right in the mood immediately because your body is just, your body and mind is just programmed to that yeah that's a really good and now using the field of, of play like that because as a as as an athlete in the past you instantly put me there i'm like that's really powerful because if i were to step on a baseball field right now with nobody in the stands and no just me just an empty baseball stadium i would be transported back to so many vivid memories i mean it's like it's like the spirits would come rushing in and fill yeah. me with that that time I hit the game-winning home run, or being hoisted on the shoulders of everyone. That you know, 
championship game, all that stuff. Good, great, otherwise. Um, and so I really think that this is a very potent and valuable tool for maybe people that are battling with or trying very desperately to um, alleviate themselves from a, a pornography addiction, perhaps, you know, and to, to know that we have the power in, in our minds, in our imagination, um, to be creative juggernauts. And in our next union um, with a partner or a new relationship or whatever if we can slow down and cultivate this type of sacred bond between the two of us whether it's a lasting relationship or something that might not be we can revisit that and and use that as our internal you know um visualization for pleasing ourselves or, or whatever versus turning to the internet and, and you know doing things that, that might not be as, as healthy and as uh, fulfilling and as, as sacred for us or, or others. So I'm not condemning pornography. I'm not advocating for pornography. I'm just saying for those that struggle, that want to leave or their partners would like them to no longer um, participate in that activity. This is a great way to um, satisfy your partner and, and his or her desires. Yeah. Um, uh, and it could, be a good, it could be a good way too for couples who are maybe struggling in that area and or maybe even you know where it maybe lost the lost the spark a little bit right kind of kind of, kind of create that use as hey let's let's dedicate a space let's clean out that spare bedroom and let's make that into you know a love room right and it doesn't have to be a sex dungeon with swings and and you know like paddles and and, and spikes and but it can be um what i'm saying is is that like it could i think it's just a lot of times we think we need to get extreme to shake shit up but this is right and this is actually just simplicity and intention and slowing down and i I think I, i know most people whether they verbalize it or not subconsciously we're all just thirsting for a deeper connection with each other. It doesn't matter if you're male or female people say women, you know, just want to, men want it too, man. You know, we maybe we're not good at articulating it or being able to express it physically or vocally, but like we definitely want deeper connection. And this is a, this is really, it's a gift. This video is a gift in being a reminder of, slowing down I yeah think. i think it's that and i think i like like you said the whole part with the sacred space and just give this hearing that idea and maybe even just playing around with that creatively even if you don't really have a separate room and putting that intent there and you know, i think that's the most important part and that could help off a lot of people a lot of people What's kind of, what does that say? The love, the lovers, the lovers. So this is a sexy box. That's, that, this is a tarot box in case our oracle cards. Yes. Can't see. This is a, this is an, it's a beautiful box. It's a wooden box hinged. So oh, that is nice. Those are some nice cards. So, um, the deck though did not come with this box. This is a, not a tarot deck. This is an oracle deck. This is the, uh, the Romance Angels Oracle Cards. Nice. All right. And um, <laughs> this is one of those decks that I had and then I gave away. And then I got it again, gave it away. And then it found me. Someone, someone else bought it for me for a gift. And I was like, it's just such a simple deck. But it's also one that has kicked many of asses over the years. And... Hmm. Um, it's an honest deck, you know, and so those are the best decks, right? And gold, gold, you know, gold plated, gold brimmed, I don't know, gold, whatever, the golden angel deck. Anyway, from the retop, <laughs> from the retop, gold, gold bound, from the um, 
from the I wouldn't say retired Doreen Virtue, but the um, <laughs> the the gear shifting Doreen Virtue. <laughs> she's uh, doing different things now. She's not making Oracle card decks. And she's doing other yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Whatever. Hmm. Teach his own. All right. So, boom, boom, boom. On the chest. Getting the boom. Collective reading for uh, you showing up later today when I post this, three weeks from now, three hours from now, three years from now. If you showed up, you're watching this part, you're not hitting a board, a board, a jack, the jack right now, then this card is not just for Ray and I, but for you as well. All right. All right, here comes the card. Two, three, two. Ah, there it is. This is the one. And what does it say? I can't see it. Whoa. True love. This Whoa. is the woman of a lifetime. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. So maybe we're all going to find our true love. I love you, Ray. <laughs> We've, heard, we've, maybe, already, we've already found it, brother. We've already found it. We've already found it, brother. <laughs> uh, oh, is there someone scornful in the background there? Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> <Let's> see. <laughs> oh no, it's an, it's not. It looks like that on the camera, but it's actually a cherub. <laughs> it, it's like an angel, <laughs> it's like an angel of blessing the love and you. So you and I are both like, ooh, someone's giving them like hate eyes, <laughs> but it's not. You can actually see the wing there. There's the wing right there. All right, kind of so remind me that. Kind of remind me of that song. Was it finally found a love of, of a, a lifetime, lifetime, a love to last a whole life through? Right, Firehouse, I believe, is the band. All right, let me read this thing. So true love. I'm assuming it's alphabetical. Ba 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 ba. Trust. Wait. Oh yeah, there it is. Ba, 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 ba. You pulled this card. Not Ray, not me, but you. By showing up to this podcast, you pulled this card. I try to visualize that. Because true and lasting love is here for you. If your question was about a specific person, then this card serves as validation of the relationship's divine nature. If you didn't ask a question, I'm just adding this. Just try to see how the rest of this message plugs into wherever it takes you. Okay? This individual has genuine love for you. Maybe the first person that pops into mind. And you both can overcome the issues that arise. This is especially the case if you can express your feelings through attributes such as kindness, compassion, and courtesy toward each other. For instance, having honest conversations would be an expression of your true love, even if it involves discussing uncomfortable topics. If you're currently seeking a relationship, this card offers you assurance that true love is on its way. Keep the faith that a wonderful relationship is destined to come to you. And don't compromise with an unsuitable partner. It's essential that you treat yourself well by taking excellent care of yourself for the foundation of true love relationship is two people who cherish who they are. That's a great reading. That is perfect for our topic today, I think. I like that. Like taking care of ourselves. It always, com it always comes back to love. Right. And it always seems to lately come back to loving yourself. Absolutely. And walking into that room. Oh, because <laughs> you created that space and, and you're rewarded with that self-loving moment of uh, the universe being a whole hell of a lot more powerful than we give it credit sometimes. And by the universe, I mean the you universe. You are the creator. What if, what, if you, what if you didn't have a partner and you just created a sacred space for yourself? I, I love that. I, Yes. Why not? Even yes. for someone single, just to go there and just to maybe even like a meditation, love uh, room and maybe have certain things that represent love. Something I don't know what that could be. That could be candles. That could be maybe in something from a retreat or um, vacation or anything that opens you, opens your heart to love. 
you could have a, a, maybe a room for that. And space think, for that. Yeah, and I think like what you said, if you don't have the room for that, and if you're currently sharing space with a lot of other people, or even sharing a room with someone, the, a corner of the room, like you set up your altar, right? Right. And, and that's your sacred space. That's, the, that's a loving space. That's a heart opening space. Maybe it's outside, you know, of the house and a little garden area. Uh -huh. And that's, that's the place you go to. Maybe it's your bathroom. And because for, for many years, for me, the most meditative place, you know, is a husband, a father, six cats and a dog. The most peaceful place for me was the shower. It was like my one place of like alone to, and like just hot steam and shit. Maybe that's the place that you, and you know, if you're single or you have your own space and limited in space, that's, that's the place that you adorn with all the accoutrements of, of self-love and, and pampering and rose petals and nothing's wrong, man. If it feels right, then it's, then it's right. Yeah. Music, find a way to get music in there. If music is important. And um, yeah, I'm all about that. Let's, let's amplify the, I mean, it's, it seems maybe like that's should, maybe the, we should do a uh, sacred space challenge to our listeners and find your little sacred space. <laughs> here we go again. Last week is the 30 second self love challenge. This week it's the um, the 10 day sacred space challenge. Here we go. We'll make it different every time. <laughs> the 14 hour <laughs> run around the block challenge. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's a it's a good call to action. It's a good. Uh, yeah. Does that, does that have a dedicated spot location just to where you can meditate or unwind, feel safe? It could, be a, it could be a desk, Ray. Maybe you've, your desk has turned into a place of clutter and just gathering mail and like other stuff. Maybe you're a writer or, or you're an artist and that drafting table just has clothes all over. So maybe you already have a space. And maybe part of the challenges is revisiting that space and 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 making it more open for yeah. you and your Recognize, creativity. Recognizing it too, I yes. think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people do have that. They just don't really realize or thought, oh yeah, I guess I do have that in my den or yes. something. And maybe recognizing that you already sort of have that, and you can kind of kind of add to it now, or maybe make it different, or burn some sage or something yes it could be the garage man clean out your garage and make a workshop a space you know and if, if you're not into workshop stuff it could be your new hot yoga room because there's no air conditioning in your garage and get a nice fan if you need one depending on where you live there's so i think there's it's unlimited really yeah and if some of you out there are like i have the smallest space on planet earth I think it's okay to borrow some space publicly. I think you can go to a park and say, this is going to be my new sacred love space. What, what about, what about like in the completion process, creating a safe haven? Oh my gosh, you're brilliant. What a genius, what a genius thought. Tell us about that. Well, it's part of the, the beginning part of the completion process by Teal Swan is that you create your own safe haven sanctuary in your own mind which there's other parts to that where you take i'm not going to get into the whole process but that's an important part where you go yes. to feel safe and when you create that you could be anywhere on the planet and take yourself there so if you don't have room in the house you don't have energy in the house you don't have you have you're shackling and you have all these excuses or reasons or forces working against you that you just can't have that space maybe your house is a place of chaos for one reason or another do you think maybe safe. you could add something like that in a link, like uh, about safe haven? Is there maybe something? I don't know if there's that meditation for that. In the I completion look, process. I don't know. I, I don't might, know what. There, there. I, I think so, someone has done it. Someone has recorded it. I know for sure. And if not, maybe maybe you or I should do that because all it is is basically reading out of the book. Um, might be a good idea. Um, well, I'll tell you what. I will look for it. And if I don't find one, I'll make a recording of it because I've been wanting to do that anyway, um, to share with clients, friends, family, whatever. Um, yeah, it's a really good, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little gift to give yourself or to have someone help guide you 
um, to for sure a treasure. Like I said, you could take it anywhere with you. You could be in jail. You could be on the roof of your house. You could be in traffic, um, maybe not driving, um, but in the passenger seat and take yourself to the safe haven. And it's a very, it's the most loving place I think you could ever, Ray, I'm sure you'd agree, ever possibly visit because all of the most magical things um, that touch you in the most loving ways are there waiting for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, we've taken each other to the safe, to our own personal safe havens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, all right. I think that's a good yep. spot for us to uh, jump wrap ship. Yeah, man. <laughs> I say, you say wrap it up. I say jump ship. This is the <laughs> shirtless guy and the <laughs> fully robed guy over here so um what do we got next week's episode 14 yeah 14 i don't know i got, I got some ideas so didn't you say that somebody requested this that we did one on tantra yes um someone on facebook was uh was sharing um you know what we're doing and they were like hey will you ever do an episode on tantra and, and i'm like okay so I'll, we listen, I'll, we listen and that's we, right. we responded to so our fans. So if you give us an idea for a teacher or even just a topic, we'll do it. Nothing's yep. off limits. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the idea to do this. Um, we, were, we were looking for so many more. Uh, as you know, out there, there's, there's endless material, but we would love to listen to what you want um, us to tackle. Uh, again, it could be something you've never watched before. It could be something that you've watched a hundred times and you think is the greatest video on planet anywhere. And um, like anything of ours that you can like, should the easiest thing you could do if you uh, financially are unable to contribute and support us at this uh, time of your life or in the process of us building out the Bodhi brothers, um, like there's so many free ways to, to help support us, like share, Tell your friends, hey, I'm watching a new podcast, listening to a new podcast. They're pretty cool guys. Uh, you can, what else? Oh, you can you could put our videos on loop on YouTube when you go to work and just let them play all day long for your dog or uh, for your, you know, <laughs> your, your, your roommate, your mother, whatever. Um, see the posters on your wall. It doesn't matter. Uh, YouTube loves those algorithms like, wow, so much playtime on those Bodhi bros. Let's, let's make them more available for people to see and, and let them know they're out there. But uh, there's so many creative free ways uh, for you to share. Comment on videos. Um, YouTube won't pick up anything unless there's action. Um, notification bell, subscribe button, all that stuff. It's all free. So thank you, thank you, thank you for any and all efforts and actions. I, yes, am, John, I am John with a J saying Cody Ray namaste he's saying namaste I'm saying make sure you pay your dues to Guru University Y-O-U that means pay attention to yourself love yourself invest in the institution of you we love you guys see you next time may the force be with you <laughs> see ya <laughs> <laughs>